I started out telling you about exercising your spirit. All right? And then, this time, we'll talk about energizing your spirit for victory. Energizing your spirit for victory. Yesterday, we talked about exercising yourself unto godliness. You exercise yourself unto godliness. And we read where he said, Bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and the one that is to come. Okay, now, how do you energize yourself for victory? Energize your spirit for victory. If you do these things that we're going to be talking about, in the next few months, there'll be such changes in your life. That will be obvious. You know, like Paul said to Timothy, meditate upon these things. He said, give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. In other words, your progress will be seen by others. It will not be hidden. They'll know. You're not trying to show it, but you can't hide it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, let your light so shine. So shine. So shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Energizing your spirit for success. I'd like us to look at uh, the Bible again, 1 Corinthians this time. When I came in, in here, you were praying. You remember? Yes. You were praying. Some of you were so, I mean, you were gone in the spirit. Some of you were just looking around, not knowing exactly what to say. Because in two minutes, you had said everything you wanted to say to God. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have you ever been praying and somebody wonder, what are you telling God? How can you spend such a long time praying? What are you saying? Sometimes they think you have so many problems. Why are you praying so long? <laughs> you know, many, many years ago, I was praying, so, you know, much younger. And my, I was praying fasting, you know, my door was shut. And my dad was troubled. My mom was troubled. They said I hadn't eaten. So my dad called me. He was just wondering, a small boy like this. He said, sit down. I sat down. He said, what's the matter? <laughs> I thought, um, nothing wrong. He said, no, no. He said, you've been praying. Is there any problem? <laughs> I said, no. He thought I hadn't told him what it was. So he was waiting, hoping I might say something. He said, have you eaten? I said, of course he knew I hadn't. Um, I said, no. He said, why? I said, I'm fasting. He said, no. Oh, what's the problem? <laughs> so when I wouldn't say anything, he said, okay. See, I didn't have a problem. You don't fast and pray just because you've got a problem. It's a ministry. <laughs> it's a ministry. First Corinthians chapter 14, I want to read to you from verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Did he say desire? Yeah. He says desire spiritual gifts. But rather that ye may prophesy. You know, I asked you, how many of you prophesy? And just very few of you. And maybe out of the few of you that prophesy, most haven't prophesied a long time. He says, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. In other words, above all the gifts of the Spirit, he says, I want you to prophesy. 
For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Uh, you, you, did you get that? Yes. He said, when you prophesy, you're speaking to men unto edification and exhortation and comfort. The gift of prophecy doesn't make you a spiritual detective. You know, some people come into church and, mm, mm, I smell sin in the camp. Mm, mm. I sniff. Mm. Sin. There's sin. But thus said the Lord, there's sin, there's sin, there's sin. Therefore, ye shall not move because there's sin. Therefore, ye shall not. Shut up! The problem of sin has been dealt with. That's why Jesus came. An intelligent pastor ought to stop that fellow from talking that way. They see, they see, they, that's why the people came. The church is not for perfect people. The church is for perfecting people. Mm -hmm. Didn't you get what I said? People don't come to church because they're perfect. They come to church to be perfected. That's what the Bible says. He gave some apostles. Ephesians chapter 4, you read from the 11th verse. He gave some apostles and some prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the perfecting of the saints. The saints are not perfect people. They're people that are being perfected. So they come with their stains and their dirt and everything. And when they come, like Jesus, when he said, you are clean through the words that I've spoken unto you. So they will come in and the minister takes the word of God and washes them. And they become again as white as snow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, he says, uh, that third, well, he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that, prophet, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. Now, that's important, verse 4. I want you to mark it in your Bible. He says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesied edified the church. When you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. That means emboldens himself. If you were a timid fellow speaking tongues, you become bold. The word translated edify also means emboldens. You're making yourself bold, he says. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue makes himself bold. Builds the spirit strong. If you were weak, you become strong. How? By speaking in tongues. 